I think that um, all the indicators are very auspicious. Um, if, if we look at uh, the situation we're in right now, I think there's never been more clarity or differentiation for Bitcoin. Welcome back to Finance Wolf, everyone. In this video, we'll discuss Michael Saylor's most recent interview on Natalie Bruno's channel pertaining to cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Michael Saylor, an American entrepreneur and business executive, is the executive chairman and co-founder of MicroStrategy. In this video, he discusses the regulatory developments over the past six months and the widespread support for Bitcoin throughout the crypto ecosystem. There is a lot of discussion about Bitcoin and cryptocurrency. So please watch the video through to the end and like, share, and subscribe to our channel, Finance Wolf. As, as the dominant crypto asset than today, I think we've, we've got pretty good clarity uh, and uh, universal consensus that Bitcoin is an asset without an issuer, that it's a global asset, that it is, it is a, a non-sovereign store of value strategy for someone seeking to escape uh, currency debasement. And I think, uh, I think the fact that Larry Fink, running the world's largest asset manager, vocalized all those ideas on public television of late was a milestone for the space. I think the second milestone for the space is, um, is the um, groundswell of positive sentiment for Bitcoin, both in the form of overall crypto positivity and Bitcoin positivity. Um, the statements by Ron DeSantis emphatically supporting your right to Bitcoin, the statements by uh, Robert F. Kennedy emphatically supporting your right to Bitcoin, the, the disclosure that Kennedy actually purchased a bunch of Bitcoin for his children publicly is a big step forward. I think the fact you have two other presidential candidates, uh, Mayor Suarez and Ragaswamy, also announcing support for uh, Bitcoin, I think those are really big deals. So that combined with um, the regulators endorsing it, the CFTC and the SEC, combined with the um, the tone uh, and uh, the tone and treatment of mainstream media. If we look at the treatment of Bitcoin in the mainstream media, both across CNBC, Fox, Bloomberg, the Wall Street Journal, the Times and the like, I think you could see a marked rotation of, um, of sentiment over the past two years uh, from one of incredulity and suspicion and fear and concern to uh, respect, either a grudging respect or this, you know, or I guess this thing is more than we thought it was. So that that uh, sentiment has changed. I think it's it's pretty clear that um, there is support for Bitcoin in both parties, in the Democratic Party, the Republican Party, and at the White House level. And uh, I think there's obviously has been universal support for Bitcoin across the crypto ecosystem. And the regulatory developments of the past uh, six months, if anything, they've increased uncertainty around everything else in crypto. The, the crypto exchanges, the cryptocurrencies that are stable coins, the crypto securities, the crypto tokens, the crypto exchanges and DeFi networks, the, the, the uncertainty there is still there, if not greater, but they've increased the certainty around Bitcoin. Um, all of the companies, the large, uh, the large financial companies filing for a spot ETF companies, all, all the Bitcoin miners continuing to operate companies like MicroStrategy and, uh, and asset managers, uh, all of them uh, moving forward with Bitcoin. I think that's been very auspicious. So I, I feel like we're at an inflection point. It's, the, it's a point at which you have the most information to conclude 
that Bitcoin is a differentiated international asset store of value and digital commodity and, and unique in the world and useful to the world. You have the most information to conclude that. And yet the ability of the retail public and the ability of institutions and governments is still largely impaired to act on that. Mm-hmm. It's, uh, it's very difficult for uh, a retiree with a pension fund to make an investment in Bitcoin. It's very difficult for a large corporation to invest in Bitcoin. It's difficult for a sovereign wealth fund. It's difficult for a government. It's difficult for a hedge fund. And so you have an example where you know, you know where the world is headed. You know what the world needs. Rational people will eventually get there. You also have, uh, you have a list of reasons why it's difficult, right? Why is it difficult? It's difficult because the accounting is indefinite and tangible instead of fair value. So you have a, a challenge and you have a solution, a process to create fair value accounting with the, uh, with the end of the tunnel clearly in view. If it's not happening by the end of the year, it's happening within 12 months. Um, you have a challenge. I can't buy a spot ETF. You have a solution. You have a host of spot ETF applications that are in version three, right? We're probably, people have been trying to do it. We must be on version four or version five iteration, yeah. but you have version five that, that are much more compelling than the previous version. And you have a lot of political pressure and sentiment and conviction to support it. And that is a solution, right? You, you have a challenge. Um, I, we need a, digital assets exchange to be transparent and regulated. You have a solution, surveillance agreements. Coinbase has already agreed to a surveillance agreement publicly with a dozen or more of these ETF filers. You have a process. Uh, The SEC, the CFTC engaged in bringing exchanges into compliance. So you have all these challenges to action. You have all of these solutions in play um, it's really just a matter of which quarter, how many quarters does it take before we put all the solutions in play. When the solutions, uh, when the rails go in place, then there's a, a huge amount of capital that will flow against a limited supply. So you have, if we look at the demand side, um, I, I, you know, my, my, description here is buying Bitcoin is like buying a beautiful house, you know, in a foreign neighborhood and you have to pay cash up front and it takes you a year of, of work to do it. Whereas buying Bitcoin via spot ETF is like buying the same beautiful house in your neighborhood with no money down tomorrow. And so there are many, many people that will not buy a house if they have to pay in cash, even ever, right? Like there are many people that will never, ever buy a house in cash. One could say the great majority. And there are many people that will say, I would pay 20% more for that house if I could finance it at the bank. So we have a large pool of capital that would love to be in the space, but they can't easily do it without things like uh, Bitcoin securities or spot ETFs. And, and so that's going to be a big catalyst for demand. And we already know it's coming and it hasn't come, which means it has not reflected itself fully in the price. Now, on the other side, we have two facts about supply. We know that there will never be more than 21 million Bitcoin. That's the, that's the overarching important first order fact. And the second order fact we have is that uh, there's a halving coming that will cut the supply that the miners have available to sell in half. And that's nearly $5 billion a year worth of supply. And then we have a third order fact. The third order fact is if large institutions can now comfortably own Bitcoin on their balance sheet, they're going to buy it and hold it forever. And the people that exist that hold it now aren't going to want to sell it. So the supply available for sale from existing holders is going to decrease. 
the supply available for sale from miners is going to decrease. And yet the demand uh, to purchase it will increase. And the duration, right, uh, the amount of time that someone wants to hold this asset is going to decrease, or sorry, is going to increase. If you decide to buy Bitcoin and hold it for a year, then that means every year 10 billion is being bought and 10 billion is being dumped on the market. But when you decide to buy Bitcoin and hold it for a decade, that means every year 10 billion is being purchased and 1 billion is being dumped on the market. So all of these things put together, they increase the demand, they stretch out the duration, they decrease the supply, and they decrease the, the, the friction to anybody to act in the favor of the network. So put them all together. And the summary is never been more bullish.